Welcome back everyone, I'm Kepley's Games, this is EVE Online, and this is the first in what is going to be a series of videos all about industry. So far we've talked about turret mechanics and missiles and drones and laser weapons and projectile weapons and hybrid weapons, shield tanking, armour tanking, hull tanking and all about combat missions and combat exploration to put that combat knowledge to use for fun and profit. In other words, we've talked all about blowing things up and preventing being blown up ourselves, but that's only half the game in EVE Online. The other half of the game is building things. The vast majority of items on the regional market will have been built by players. Most ships, modules, ammunition, drones, rigs, all that stuff, almost all of it is built by players. Without these industrialist players building and selling things, the entire economy of the game would collapse and the game would cease to exist. In this video, we'll do a quick run through of the manufacturing process and then examine each step in that process in much more detail in separate videos which will be coming out later. Then after that's done, we'll get into some more of the advanced industry stuff. Right, with all that having been said, let's get right into it. Manufacturing is fairly simple in theory. You get a blueprint for an item, you gather the materials listed in that blueprint, then you install the material and blueprint in a factory, you wait until the job is complete, and then you deliver your items to yourself, and that's it. So the first thing you have to do is decide what you're going to build. This can be items that you're going to sell straight away for a profit, or items that your corporation or alliance need you to build for the greater good, or things that you're going to keep and use yourself so you can lower your running costs by building things yourself instead of paying good money for them on the market. With so many tens of thousands of items to pick from, this may take you some time. There are many, many, many things to consider which we'll go through in one of the future videos I've already mentioned. One tip I'll provide for free is that ammunition and drones are always good sellers for newbies to start with, so we're going to start with those. The next step is get a blueprint for the item that you've chosen. Blueprints come in two main types, there are original blueprints and there are blueprint copies. Originals can be used infinite times and can be researched to reduce the amount of minerals required and speed up the time it takes to build the items. Blueprint copies expire after a certain number of uses and their research statistics are fixed and cannot be upgraded. Originals can be very, very expensive, but copies are usually cheaper. However, some items don't have originals at all and must be built from copies. You can find these copies as loot drops in certain sites, as we've seen if you've watched this series before, or you can buy them from loyalty point stores. Base level, unresearched, original blueprints are sold by NPCs on the market, one of the few things that's NPC seeded. Originals which have been used for any reason, like as if they've been researched or invented from or copied or used to manufacture, can only be sold on the player to player contract system, and all copies have to be sold on the contract system. This is because there is a nearly infinite permutation of research levels and runs on the blueprints, so to have them on the market they would need a separate market entry for each and every one so the market would know how to price them. So because that's impossible they've put it on contracts and you'll have to work out how much you want to pay for the stats of each blueprint. To keep things nice and simple in this video we'll just be buying an original blueprint from an NPC on the market. Right now, in the current state of the game, cruiser sized ships are the most popular ships in the game. So medium sized ammo is what we're going to be looking at. At the moment, we're in the Galente Federation and their native weapon system is hybrid turrets. And the hybrid charge that deals the most damage is antimatter. So I think we'll build some of that. Open the market. We'll go into blueprints and reactions, ammunition and charges hybrid charges, medium, and antimatter charge M. This is the one we want. Or of course, you could have simply gone up here to the search bar and typed in antimatter, and then you'd find it here under blueprints and reactions. So antimatter charge M is what we want. 
Any market order you see with an expires in time over 90 days will be an NPC selling price as players are capped at 90 day durations on their market orders. So as we see we have 6 sellers, all of them are over 90 days so they're all NPC and they're all selling the same blueprint for exactly the same amount of money. So this can be considered to be the best price for these blueprints. So all we have to do is to right click on whichever one we want. We'll just pick this one because it's the closest because it's only three jumps away. You select buy this, then you click buy and then you'll have to go to that place and pick up your blueprint and take it home so it's nice and safe. After a very short trip of six jumps, we're back home with our brand new blueprint as we see here. So let's examine it. Well, right click and show info, put it in the center of the screen. These are the various industry jobs that can be performed using this blueprint. The one we want is manufacturing. So we'll left click that and that brings up this little information. The time per run is how long each job run takes. In this case, it's 10 minutes per run. The outcome is how many units we will get per job run. So every run will give us 100 units of ammunition. The required skills is which skills and levels of those skills we need in order to make use of this blueprint. As this is a very basic and very easy to make blueprint, we only need industry level one and nothing else. Other blueprints will require a great deal more skills. For instance, this tech two ship needs all these skills. As you can see, it's a huge long list, lots of them are at level five. So industry can get really quite difficult but our blueprint is nice and easy. Input materials is all the stuff we need for each job run. So the next step is to gather those materials. Now we only need some basic minerals for this ammunition, so it shouldn't be too hard. We can get these either by buying them from the market or we can collect and reprocess trash loot we get as a byproduct from running combat sites or combat missions or we can find asteroids which contain these minerals and go out there and harvest them ourselves directly. You will have to examine the market price of these minerals in your current region and then decide which is the best method for you. Again, we'll go through this in huge amounts of detail in a future video. Luckily for us, this blueprint's minerals can all be found in high security space asteroid belts. Right click and show info. This is may be obtained by reprocessing the following ores and their variations available in high security space. Feldspar, Scordite, Plagio Place. So you know to look out for these rocks and you'll get Tritanium. And the same for Pyrite. This is found in Scordite and Pyroxeries in high security. It's also found in Low, Null and Wormhole. And the last thing we need is a little bit of Mexalon, which again can be found in high security space in Pyroxeries and Plagioclase asteroids. Other blueprints will have materials which are not found in high sec asteroids, or they'll need materials that aren't minerals at all and come from a variety of different sources, such as reactions, planetary production, exploration sites, ice mining, and other such things, which we'll cover in a future video. Being Mr. Organized, I've already gathered the materials we need. So we have our blueprint, we have the skills to use it, and I have already got the materials we need. I got enough materials for 100 runs. So now the next stage is to find the correct factory to install the job. You have a choice between NPC stations and player owned upwell stations. Upwell stations often have better factories than NPC ones and will give bonuses to the amount of materials we need per run and will also reduce the build time per run. But these upwell stations can be attacked and destroyed or the owners can simply lock you out any time they wish. So use them at your own risk and never ever store anything in them. Just take with you what you need to start the job, start the job and don't leave anything else behind. NPC stations are safer and they're always open. And you would think this structure browser would be the tool we would use to locate our chosen factory, but sadly the developers have made a bit of a boo-boo here. We go to the Neocom menu and utilities and structure browser. Here we have a look here in the service filter. There's one filter which says industry. Well, you might think that's good because we want to do industry. 
but there are several different types of industrial job that can be done, which require different kinds of factories. There's manufacturing, researching, copying, inventing, reverse engineering, and the structure browser does not tell you which of these that that particular structure is capable of. Lumping them all together into a single industry heading was a stupid, stupid decision and makes the structure browser completely useless for what we want to do. If you see here, it, it will say here, this is a station and it's offering services of industry. Well, which is it? Is it manufacturing? Is it research? Is it invention? We don't know. All it says is that it does industry. So structure browser, useless. So don't use it. But luckily for us, the industry panel will give us all the information we need. If we open the industry panel and then click on the facilities tab and wait for it to load, here we are. Now we have this filter here and this shows you all the different things that come under the industry header. So the one we want is manufacturing. See this one here only does manufacturing because all the rest are greyed out. This one here does manufacturing and invention. This one here does most of them except for reactions. I believe there was only one in within five jumps that does reactions at all, but we want to do manufacturing. You can sort it by jumps and whether it's high sec or low sec. But the thing we really want to concentrate on and sort for are the tax rate and pay attention to the little red bars that are under the icons. So we'll filter it by tax. This tax is paid when you install the job. The little red bar is how many jobs in total are being run in that system, which modifies the tax rate with more jobs, meaning a larger modifier. When you mouse over it, you'll see this is called the system cost index. So we'll mouse over this one. Yeah, system cost index 3.67%, which will be added on to the standard tax of 10%. The longer the bar, the more jobs are being run and the higher this will go. This one only has a, like one pixel, so we'll have a look. Yeah, system cost index, 0.48%. Other ones will have much more, much more busy systems will have longer bars. These ones are, this one's really long. System cost index, 5.58, that's quite steep. So you want to find a, a, a good mix of low tax rate and low system cost index if possible and also with upwell stations when you mouse over them it'll actually tell you which bonuses are being applied by that particular station which one let's have a look at this one this Raitaru is giving 15 percent faster build times one percent less material is needed and the job cost modifier is minus three so that's 3% cheaper-esque. That's after the tax and after the system cost index, it takes 3% off that. And up here, you see it lists everything that can be built in that station. And because the owners have fitted rigs, some specific items get additional bonuses. So in this particular station, building battleships is 20% faster. And deployable things and freighters and implants and industrial command ships so that's quite a good station again we'll go through this selection process in huge detail in a future video under facility type station means npc stations and everything else is an upwell of some sort npc stations will charge you a flat 10 percent tax as we see here this is a station so it's npc you mouse over it this is all the things it can build Notice here, there are no bonuses. NPC stations don't give you any bonuses. So 10% tax rate, no reduction in material needs, no reduction in build times, but at least it's always open and it can't be destroyed. And so looking through this list, I think this one here looks pretty good. 1% tax rate, only 1.41% cost index, 15% faster build times, saves us 1% of the materials and the job cost modifier is minus 3. It would be perfect if it had a bonus to charge which means ammunition but it doesn't but you can't have everything. So I think 
we'll set destination to this one and we'll go and install our job there. So make sure we have all our stuff on board our ship for the journey. But before we undock, there is one last very important thing to do. This is to check if the corporation that own this station are at war. To do that, you right click on the station, show info, and left click on this badge, which is the owning corporations badge. And you click on their war history tab. Finished wars, you don't have to worry about. If it says active wars or pending wars, then that's a red flag and you really shouldn't use the station because that means it's at imminent risk of being attacked and destroyed and you might lose your stuff. Feel free to use the station, but understand that this is the situation. So these guys have no active wars or no upcoming pending wars. So let's get out there and install a job before someone actually does start a war with them. Here we are, we have arrived safe and sound at this lovely player owned station. Let's take a look at it. Lovely. I still think it's great that players can build and own entire stations. It's a really good part of the game. Right, let's dock. Docking request accepted. Okay, so now we're here inside the station. It's time to install our job and get things moving. Make sure the blueprint and the materials are in the station's item hangar and not in your ship cargo. This is an important step that people sometimes get wrong. Right, that's that done. There are a few different ways to install a job. You can right click the blueprint and select use blueprint or you can open the industry panel and drag the blueprint into the middle to populate it or you can open the industry panel click on blueprints this is the one we have in the station and you just left click on it to select it they all end up doing the same thing so this is where you'll be spending most of your time this is the industry production panel so let's explain what we're seeing the first thing you have to do is make sure that this filter up here in the top right called input material location matches exactly the location where your blueprint and your materials are stored luckily for us we only have one option here which is item hanger which is where they are so yes these match which is perfect if you have like canisters or other things and this doesn't match then your job won't start this sometimes changes of its own accord and it confuses people an awful lot the next thing we have to look at is below it is the output location. This is good, like if you want to output things into a can, then just load up the can and head off to market without, without it just spawning here in the item hanger and cluttering things up. So get these two things right first. In the middle, we see our blueprint. Under it is where you input how many runs you want to do. On the left, you then see the materials you need to perform that number of runs. When they're highlighted in blue, it means you have enough. If they're highlighted in red, you don't have enough. So I'll put in 200. And there we go, they have turned red. And the progress bar shows you how far away you are. The start button reds out because you don't have enough. This says no, you haven't got enough. When you mouse over this icon, you will see all of the bonuses you're getting. So in this structure, we are getting a 1% reduction in the materials we need to make the blueprint. So if we show info on the blueprint and compare this list of materials to what we're actually being asked for when we install the job, you'll see that the Tritanium is four less, 445 instead of 449. The Pyrite is four less, 413 versus 417, but the Mexalon is still seven because we're only saving 1% and 1% of seven isn't enough to reduce it any. But these reductions is for the entire job, not per run. So if we put in a hundred runs, 
you'll now see that we are getting even bigger reductions. So now the Maxilon is actually saving 1% of 700, which is 7, so we only need 693 instead of 700. And likewise, these have gone down as well. So this is the economy of scale. The more things you build, the better off you will be because of how percentages work. This outcome on the right hand side tells you how many things in total you will get from that number of runs. So obviously 100 means we're getting 10,000, one run would be 100. The job duration and the total job cost are below that. And again, you mouse over these to see what bonuses you're getting. If you remember the basic build time for this blueprint says it should take 10 minutes per run. But due to me having industry and advanced industry at level five and the structure giving us another minus 15% job duration, the job duration has fallen from 10 minutes per run to five minutes and 47 seconds which is pretty nice here's the total job cost they are the system cost index is 1.41 percent the structure is reducing that by three percent and then the tax is added on after that so the tax is only one percent which adds one isk so to install one run of this job will cost 96 isk obviously this also scales that was obviously 96.26 isk because of the way scaling works. When we scale it up, it says 9,626 isk, which is really nothing. And this will take nine hours and 38 minutes to make a hundred runs. When you're happy with everything, simply click the start button, get rid of this. We'll make a one run. Everything looks good, so we'll click start. Now the jobs tab has lit up. See the time left is going down. Click on the jobs tab. This shows you all the jobs you're doing. I'm currently running lots of other jobs. This is the one we've done. As you see, this is the progress bar. It'll start off orange and turn blue as it progresses. And when we come back in five minutes and 20 seconds, I'll show you how to deliver the jobs. All right. Our six or so minutes has passed our job is ready to be delivered and the good thing about jobs is that very much like the scale queue they keep running even if you log out so you can rack up a job to do overnight when you're not online and when you come back online you'll have a big pile of new stuff to sell so that's the best thing about industry i mean you can spend all day blowing things up and then you can do industry which will run when you're offline so you're earning it backwards and forwards so when your job is ready, you can either select the job and click the deliver button here, or you can just click the deliver button here, or this deliver all ready jobs button down here. They all do the same thing, so we'll just click deliver. There we go. And now if we open the item hanger, here we are. Here are our 100 rounds of antimatter charge M. And that is all there is to manufacturing. You decide what you're going to build, you get the blueprint, you make sure you have the skills for it, you gather the materials, you find a factory, you install it, you wait for it to complete and you click deliver. Very very simple, at least at this level, it's very simple. As I said, we'll go through each and every one of these simple steps in huge detail in future videos and then dive into very advanced industry. But for now, I've given you enough information at least to get started. Industry is all about spreadsheets and market research and logistics and making marginal savings in order to turn a profit. Some people love that aspect of the game, other people don't, that's completely fine. It's, this is EVE Online and it's a sandbox and you can do whatever you want. Make sure you come back for the other videos in the series as you do need to fully understand what you're doing with the industry if you want to return big profits and become a billionaire. So until then, take very good care of yourselves and I'll talk to you again later.